Okay, I'm recording my 240 gallon freshwater tank setup, which has been set up for approximately four years, maybe four and a half. As you can see, I have numerous angels which I bred for the last five years, and there's approximately 22 left out of the 47 that were originally bred from babies on. And I have our Bosemite rainbow you can see in the center right there. And I have a couple of Eclipse cats, which they tend to hide under the rock. And actually all the rocks I obtained from Oregon, along the side of some of the highways, and also the larger rocks I got from Capistrano along the ocean in California. As you can see, I have live plants. I've got some ferns and anubias, Amazon swords, got some ferns, some type of a tall grass plant here with the ball, which is doing really well. And I have a couple of, they're called Sun Sun submersible pumps, power heads, which are rated at 1,320 gallons per hour. And then below, I built my own 45 gallon acrylic tank sump, which I basically copied on a YouTube video. As you can see, I've built my own drip plate, which is 14 inches by 14 inches in the first compartment. I ordered these black sponge material out of China, which seems to be doing really, really well. Now I've got the black bio walls underneath. And then in the second section, I've got my ceramic biological media with some more sponge material and I have this plastic wire mesh type of on the lower layer and it's also biological so as you can see the water circulates from the tank through two corner boxes back down into the on top of the drip plate where I've got it plumbed at two into one line with three quarter inch PVC piping and the water flow rated at about a four four foot head height it's rated at about 758 gallons per hour which is more than sufficient and I have my heater in the tank and actually I have a additional heater setup which is not plugged in just in case as a backup that this one quits functioning and then I have a, a lifeguard a lifeguard 4000 model which is rated at 1022 gallons per hour at zero head height but at four foot head height at four foot head height as I said earlier it's rated about 758 gallons per hour and for additional filtration, I have this Blueball FX5, which works really well. Yes, I've had a problem with uh, algae on my plants, as you can tell. And I basically cut down the lighting from approximately 10 hours a day down to about 5 hours a day. And hopefully that will help. But as you can see, the tank is pretty clean, and I do a water change about once a month, and I generally change anywhere from 60 to about 75% of the water. And when I put the water back in the tank, I put it back around the same temperature as the original, which is about 76 to 78 degrees, and it seems to work really well for all the fish. And like I said, most fish in this tank are anywhere from four to about six years old like my two red tail sharks here they're about six years old and they've done really really good it looks like i got a cat here here's one of my eclipse cats they like to hide a lot especially at night and over here I built my own 
homemade canopy top. As you can tell, it's hinged in two areas. I like the way it turned out. And then I have a National Geographic automatic feeder here, which works really, really well. And I feed them twice a day, usually 8 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock in the evening. And I raise up the other side here, where they're both hinged, as you can tell. And I've got two sets of four foot LED lights, spectrum, full spectrum lights, which work really, really well in this tank. One is a Fluval light, and then one other one, which I purchased recently, is made by a company called Aquanet. I think it's out of China. And then the two additional four foot LED lights in the front, I can't remember the name of the company. It's Aqua something, but they work really, really well. But I like the way that my sump turned out. It works really, really good. And it's really, really low maintenance. Basically, all I really ever clean is just the sponges, and I leave all the biological alone. And this Lifeguard 4000 model submersible return flow pump works really, really good. I've had it in there for about five and a half, six months. Had no problems. And I plumbed it with three quarter inch PVC piping, as you can see, and tried to put in many 45 degree bends so it doesn't restrict the water flow. As you can see, and I have additional lighting over the sump just to give it a better look. And then I have a, the PVC piping running on the back of the tank towards the tent of the tank. It's three quarter inch. And then what I did was I downsized it with an adapter to half inch diameter PVC piping, which seems to give it a stronger water flow. Basically I experimented and it seems to work better with the half inch. And as you can see, I have two angled PVC pipings, one in front of each corner box. And what that basically does is when I feed the fish, it pushes the, the flakes away from the corner boxes so a lot of the food is not wasted. And it seems to work really, really well. Nice water flow there. So I can either leave the canopy open, which I normally do when I feed, so that the National Geographic automatic feeder doesn't build up moisture inside, so the food stays dry. And it works really, really well. Yeah, put a lot of time and effort into this, and I think for the most part it turned out pretty good. Haven't had any really main issues. Oh, and then obviously I have a this plastic tubular air stone that screws together, and you can adjust the airflow between each. They're about maybe one and a quarter inch pieces of plastic tubing that screw together and you adjust the flow between each two by opening or closing and it seems to work pretty good and I believe I have a well, what is it it's actually a Petco brand it's called the AR3000 air pump that works air stones and it and, and I obviously I run it max and it seems to put out pretty good airflow to the stone as you can see. It really helps to aerate the water and the fishes seem to attract to it.
to build up there. As you can tell, I did some pruning just yesterday and a lot of these plants because the leaves are getting really, really lots and lots of algae buildup on them. They look like a really dark brown. But overall, the plants seem to be doing pretty good. They've been in here for probably about, oh, maybe about four months. So they're, they seem to be doing okay. Hopefully the cutting back on the lighting and doing more frequent water changes will help control some of this algae. I thought about adding a UV sterilizer maybe to help too eventually, but for now I just want to see how these plants do with less lighting. As you can see, there's quite a bit of algae buildup on all these rocks, too. But from what I understand, that's pretty beneficial for the fish. And then, I'll, and as far as the the natural wood goes, it's uh, it's what they call mopani wood. It's from some part of Africa, and it had to be treated for. Oh, probably about two and a half weeks. I boiled it, let it soak, tried to rinse the tannins out over and over and over. Let's set, set it in buckets for about two weeks and periodically would dump the, the tannin water and add fresh water, boiled it again, put it in the tank, and it still would release a lot of tannins into the water, which obviously don't harm the fish. And it took probably about 15 water changes to eventually get rid of all the all the brownness color in the water so it's nice and clear now thank god so anyway that's about it for now and hope you guys enjoyed my video and let me know what you think thank you bye bye